Hey guys, Youngblood with you for another Yawing and Jawing. This will be the fourth episode. Um, last one I talked about optimization, and actually you're going to see me use rocket pods on this one because somebody let, in one of the last ones wanted to see that. So we are going with pods. Let's see. And the sexy black camo for the mosquito this time. Looks pretty good with the red. I like that look a lot. Um, so my last video I was talking about uh, optimization and there were some things I didn't get to get to because I died a little bit too fast. Uh, let's swing over to Camp Waterson before moving up. Um, so yeah, um, their population imbalance is something that uh, Higby and his crew are apparently putting a lot of a focus on. Um, and one of the things that they're talking about actually doing is uh, putting in a bounty system. And uh, I know for those of you that are, uh, you know, follow the NFL, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, that sounds like the Saints, um, you know, which is actually kind of funny. But basically what they're planning on doing, oh, I still got night vision on this. Uh, what they're planning on doing is, or at least thinking about doing, is making it so if you kill somebody that's in an overpopulated faction, you get more experience for that versus killing somebody, oh, Reaver. Versus killing somebody that's, uh, you know, on a, uh, you know, levelly populated faction. So, don't hit me. So, you know, if you kill somebody on Vanu... Did I seriously not get a single one of those shots on target? There we go. Um... So if you kill somebody, let's say you're playing as TR and Vanu's overpopulated, you would get more XP for killing them. If you killed somebody that was maybe playing in C and they were evenly populated, you would end up um, basically breaking even. Uh, it would just be a normal XP kill. So I think that's kind of cool in theory. I mean, what it seems like it would do is actually, you know, encourage you to attack the faction that is uh, you know, currently overpopulated, and chances are that means that they're actually holding and taking more ground, um, which is good, I think, for the overall balance of the game. Now, what that actually means, uh, you know, does that, is that extra XP going to be enough to balance things out? Probably not, but it at least helps to balance the gameplay out a little bit. I don't foresee people deciding to switch factions based on that long term, but you know, it may encourage people to play some of their alt characters, if nothing else. Now, one of the other things that they were talking about is changing alerts to uh, percent needed to win. So right now, you know, it may, be, it may say, you know, capture and hold as much Esamir territory as possible, and then whoever has the most territory on Esamir at the end of the alert wins. Well, now... Oh, a reaver over here. Oh, something just crashed. Where? Yeah, that must have been the reaver that crashed. God, I'm going to get myself rammed over here. So, uh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, so now what it may be is, oh god, you may be required if you're the uh, highest populated faction to sit, get, I don't know, let's say 30% of the, uh, or I don't know, like 5 or 10% more than the other factions would need in order to win. I think that's pretty good because when you have more people on a server in general, they tend to go over and crash the alert. Now, is that it, you know is that gonna change and how much extra is it gonna take you know, like how much extra are they gonna whoa 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 what am I getting hit by see it feels like flak but I swear it was coming from the sky oh derp they've got that uh, tower so, I don't know. I mean, if it's like a, maybe you need to get 5 or 10% more of the continent in order to win the alert, I think that's fair. Um, and I think that's probably a good change. Now, there you go with that analog throttle again. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that I didn't get to in the last video was the uh, change to the strikers. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, the strikers right now... Uh, you know, no longer just hold their lock. You need to maintain a, a visual lock with the striker in order to actually be able to, you know, get the kills um, and make sure all the rockets land. Now, I haven't personally tested this out yet, but apparently what it what ends up happening is the um, is if you lose your lock, the missiles pretty much go flying off wildly. Now, I'm assuming um, I'm assuming that you end up. Uh, you know, get it, still doing damage if it hits something. 
But um, I don't. <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be pretty rare that you actually hit anything if they're just going flying off wildly and unpredictably. So. Um, okay, so some of the other things I want to do is just talk about some of the questions that people asked in some of the other videos. Um, one of them was, uh, what is analog throttle? And I I'll give you guys a demonstration real quick. Uh, when you're flying, it, you're, if your S is uh, bound to decelerate, you'll see here that when I use it, I slowly come to a stop. Well, let me do that again where I'm not actually holding the space bar. Let's get some speed and decelerate and there you go okay you can see that I slowed down now when you do that with analog throttle and it's an option that you have in the uh, key bindings um, notice how much faster that is and basically when that's faster as far as your response time um, it's faster for you to stop and be able to pull maneuvers off so it's something that I would encourage you to test out because it is extremely effective the river um, and it really yields some pretty damn good results as far as your overall efficiency. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay. Um, yeah, and it yields really, really good results as far as your overall efficiency and maneuvers and how well you can... Oh, this is a really bad spot to be. And I'm out of afterburner. By the tech plant. Huh. Oh. Ah, damn it, I hear him, but I don't see him. Okay, hold on. I gotta get myself refocused. There he is. Hostile in the air. Incoming enemy aircraft. Um, I need a better approach angle. Coming up over that tower is bad news, especially when they got turrets on the other tower behind it. So yeah, uh, test it out, you know, play with it. Now the one thing that you need to remember is, it, after you use it, um, you don't start moving forward again. You gotta kinda re-tap the W key in order to start moving. And that makes a big difference, and knowing that you need to do that's really important. Um, someone else uh, asked me, and it was actually one of my uh, outfit mates, Like, and it, the question was basically, what's the role of, what the hell happened with that lib? Did you see him just jump? Granted, keep in mind, I'm playing on Connery, and I always get lag on Connery, but, um, yeah, that was weird. Now, the Enforcer modified versus the, uh, Sauron versus the, uh, uh, Vulcan, you know, what's the actual role? Because they're all supposed to kind of be that specialized niche role, and I gotta tell you, the Enforcer modified is a fun weapon, and it's purely that. Its effectiveness is, and for those of you who don't know, it's, it's an Enforcer, but... What it actually does is it shoots shotgun shells. It's like, well, okay, that's kind of cool, I guess, but you gotta be really close in range, and a shotgun on vehicles, the novelty's worn off on that just a little bit. So, I mean, it's okay. The, the shotguns are fun, but it's not super useful. So, where can the Enforcer actually be useful? If you've got a uh, infantry fucker harasser, it's okay, uh, especially since you can get out of trouble really fast. Uh, and it's okay uh, on a vanguard, like let's say you're rolling around in a uh, tech plant, or not a tech plant, well it's kind of effective in a tech plant. Or if you're, god, I didn't hit him once. Uh, um, but it's moderately useful in amp stations when you're rolling around. Ultimately for your NC guys, if you're wanting to unlock something, don't don't waste your certs or your station cash on the enforcer modified unless you just like LOL weapons kind of like the uh, um, kind of like the uh, uh, air, the uh, air hammer which is a uh, fun and effective in its certain roles but it's less effective now than it was so um, you know buyer beware I guess would be my message to you guys uh, someone else asked an interesting question and uh, I kind of liked it. It was, is Planet Side 2 dying, and what are my thoughts on that? Well, personally, I don't think Planet Side 2 is dying. I think it's struggling with its uh, uh, gaining popularity with new players based on... Is that a scythe? Based on the uh, system requirements that are currently in place. What is he doing? Wah wah. Now, you know, I think there's a lot of people with decent PCs that struggle when playing this game. 
Um, and I think some of the optimization that's going to be coming into play it should really help things out a little bit. Oh, fail. <laughs> and that's where not looking at your altimeter can really come into play. Um, and the, uh, the analog throttle can get you in trouble. I didn't push forward and I just lost altitude and lost altitude. So that's part of the fun of this series. You get to see me fail. So um, I guess I'll pick up on that question when I get back next time with the uh, is Planet Side 2 dying? It's kind of a cliffhanger on what I think. So thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later. Take care.